How's it going, everyone? It's Holly from Mars Search 1000. Today is January 7th, 2021. And today, we're going to be talking about two low pressure systems that will dump snow, one in the mid Atlantic and another that could dump snow well further south of that, right around the southeast. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content so let's begin by the first thing you look at the european model and as you can see at the 120 hour forecast mark you see that there's a low pressure right over alabama and you see the darker greens moving further southward and by the way the darker greens represent cooler temperatures um what it really represents is how is the height at which at where 500 millibars is located and as a and if the height is higher or i mean lower than usual that means that there's less convection there's less rising air and that means that the air is cooler and more dense which means that the darker greens and the blues represent colder temperatures and you see that it's you see the darker greens move very far south in this scenario right around the 120 hour mark which isn't very typical for you guys in the southeast to see because usually the jet stream stays well up north and we see most of the cold arctic air stay north along with the jet stream however this jet stream is dipping very far south and the reason why is because we are in a negative arctic oscillation where the ridge and the low pressure that's located in the Atlantic at this point is very weak, which means the westerly winds are weak. So the cold air is far more likely to meander southward. And that's exactly what is forecast as of right now, right around the five day mark, as we see a low pressure right, um, right along this jet stream, this Arctic jet stream moving further south. And this will be the recipe that will create that could potentially create a snowstorm for the southeast. There's still a lot of uncertainty. We're still five days out. There's still that possibility that this snowstorm may not happen, at least in the southeastern portion of the United States. It's more likely to happen, I would say, in Texas and Oklahoma at this point, especially since there's um, both the GFS and the European model are agreeing that there's going to be a low pressure right around Texas that's going to bring a decent amount of snow. Let me show you guys the 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 forecasted radar for um with the GFS model and you see that there's snow extending all throughout Texas, a pretty large band of snow throughout Texas, throughout the northeastern portion of Texas and this will dump a decent amount of snow right around Texas. However, in the latest GFS model run the GFS model is now leading towards this storm saying far south to the point where it won't bring much of any precipitation to the southeast. And this as a result of a stronger ridge in the in the eastern half of the United States, which is pushing this storm further south into the Gulf of Mexico to a point where you won't experience much precipitation at all. However, the European is disagreeing with the GFS the GFS forecast and brings a low pressure a lot further north because this ridge located in the eastern half of the United States is a lot weaker, which means that low that low pressure is more likely to fit in and move, maneuver more north northerly than what the GFS forecast model is saying. Which one is correct? We're not sure yet. The forecast model still need to iron it iron it out as it continues to get more data and as we get closer to the actual date of when this is supposed to happen we're going to get more confidence however there's still a lot of uncertainty with this so what could change the what could change the outcome of this low pressure systems trajectory um, um is this ridge located in the eastern half of the united states if it builds stronger if it builds a little bit more and move and maneuvers in a way that's a little bit more southward and we're more likely to see that low pressure stay further southward as well and pretty much um be forced more southward as a result of this 
this ridge located in the eastern half of the United States. However, if there's a little bit of a weakness in the ridging and this ridge is a little weaker and maybe a little further northward, then we could see that low pressure system stay just north enough to the point where you're going to see a lot more precipitation and potentially and more likely in the form of snow because there's going to be just enough cold air for a lot of the southeast to, um, to change a lot of that rain into snow which will which could potentially create a major snowball there for the southeast if all the right conditions play out and this is going to have a lot of a decent amount of unstable air to work with because as you can see there's going to be a big dip in the jet stream bringing a lot of arctic air further southward and it's going to encounter this warm gulf of mexico water which is going to enhance the convection with this storm and potentially create a much more potent snowstorm in the southeast but we just have to wait and see and the key really we need to watch over the next several days is how this ridge forms because that will definitely determine the impacts you'll experience in the southeast however i will say with more confidence that the that texas and oklahoma will experience a snowstorm from this because if we move on to day three you see the low pressure is already at this point and it's it's pretty much in very well in agreement with the gfs model when it comes to the snow in the southeast because as you can see right around the four day mark you see the snow is a is right around texas at this point and gfs model hasn't really been changing that forecast that there's going to be snow in within texas and the midwest and since we're closer to the day that the snow is supposed to happen there's more confidence especially when the computer models keep persisting this forecast run so i think it's safe to assume that in texas and oklahoma you will experience a snowstorm headed into the late weekend into early next week so you definitely want to keep that in mind in oklahoma and texas since it isn't every day you experience a snowstorm in those areas and this snowstorm will originate from a mid-latitude cyclone moving through the Pacific Northwest and it's going to bring a decent amount of snow through the Pacific Northwest and then this piece of energy will move further southward and it will maintain its strength as a result of the increased instability as it moves further south. It's going to weaken very rapidly as it moves over the Rocky Mountains since the, the obviously mountains force a lot of convection and the forced convection means that it's going to lose a lot of its energy as the as precipitation condensates and loses its latent heat in the upper atmosphere however it will maintain its strength as a result of this increased instability right around texas for where it goes it's going to encounter a little bit of warm air and warm rising air to keep this storm alive by the time it reaches texas however beyond that be remains a mystery of what is going to happen it really all depends on how this ridge like i said builds up in the eastern half of the united states but i would stay tuned in the southeast and for texas and oklahoma i will i would at least um be in high alert for a potential snowstorm there's still some uncertainty there still could be die there still could be some changes in the forecast of where exactly this will impact your area and how much snow you'll receive since we're still three to four days out from impacting Texas or Oklahoma. However, I will say it's more likely than not you will experience some type of snow event right around Oklahoma and Texas. So I want you guys to keep that in mind headed into late this weekend and into early next week. And in other weather related news, we see that there's still this low pressure system currently pretty much spiraling right around Louisiana and the Southeast. Right now, there's a little bit of convection ahead of this cold front. It looks very reminiscent of a mid-latitude cyclone, which you could consider it a mid-latitude cyclone since we're seeing the dry air revolve, rotate around the southeastern portion, I mean, southwestern portion, and we're seeing that extending squall line extending along that cold front. So it looks very reminiscent to a mid-latitude cyclone. However, it isn't at it isn't as potent as typical mid-latitude cyclones for the most part it's relatively weak compared to other mid-latitude cyclones 
which is good news since it won't bring any major impacts throughout the southeast there won't be any major severe weather threat and that's it's as a result of the lack of instability um with this storm because if we move around this point you see that while there is cold air dipping down it isn't a ton of cold air dipping down on the western side of this storm and that's really going to limit it in terms of how much convection is going to occur right around the center of circulation and the cold air will primarily stay just to the north rather than further just to the west of the soil pressure system which will keep the storm strength at bay it'll keep it from rapidly intensifying and i wouldn't say it'll start intensifying in a decent manner until it's well off the coast and which is definitely good news that there won't be any major sort of storm from this however there still will be snow that will impact north carolina and potentially virginia headed into friday and going into saturday where you could see up to six inches of snow half a foot of snow in the higher elevations of north carolina let's take a look at the um total snowfall forecast for the gfs at this point and you see that moving forward for the most part the gfs is expecting around a good area of around one to three inches maybe a little bit more than that in the higher elevations but the forecast the snowfall forecast has dropped considerably over the past several days and it seems like there isn't just going to be enough convection for at for as much snow to fall in north carolina which might be good news for some of you and it seems like the track is now further southward so virginia might miss out the um on this snowstorm more than anticipated earlier so so just keep in mind it are right around western north carolina where you could experience a little bit more snow than than virginia and virginia just stay aware of this it's unlikely at this point you're going to experience a uh even a minor snowball threat however just keep in watch because changes in the forecast definitely could occur and it could change very very rapidly as you know especially during the winter so um and in terms of the temperatures right now you see most of the united states is under freezing temperatures a little bit more um and it's as a result of the arctic oscillation like i said bringing a lot of jet stream dips and expect this to continue over the next several weeks and i want to emphasize that thanks to this negative arctic oscillation we are experiencing this means that we're more likely to see more snowstorms in the future right now there aren't any major ones currently happening however since we're in the negative arctic oscillation expect a lot more arctic blasts ex expect low average temperatures from throughout most of the lower 48 of the united states and ex and as a result expect more snowstorms from this over the next several weeks since we're in the negative arctic oscillation as i just want to point i just i just want to point that out going into the next several weeks and to show you guys what to expect when it comes to the winter weather over the next several weeks throughout the entire country but anyways guys i uh, thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video and i hope you guys have a good day a good night a good morning whenever you're watching this